Good evening. Welcome to New Hope Church. My name is Chad. Good to see you all tonight. Ushers, could you please prepare for the tithes and offering? You know, today I was in town. I was shopping around and uh, getting ready for Spruce Up Day. And, you know, what's so exciting about Spruce Up Day is we're, we're not only gathering together to clean our church um, and get ready for Easter, but we're, it's to prepare us for all the events and things that are happening that are coming up in the next few weeks. Coming up on our next Sunday, we're going to have our Palm Sunday, and we're going to have our Keiki come and celebrate with us. And then after that, on Wednesday and Friday, we're going to have our Easter play. And then on Sunday is our Easter Sunday. And what's so important about Easter Sunday is that we're remembering that Jesus gave his life for us. You know, he died on the cross. He was buried and resurrected. And we have new life in him. And so when we give of our tithes and offerings, it's because we have a heavenly father that so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And we have new life. If you're visiting us for the very first time, we want to welcome you to join us. Please don't feel obligated to give. If you're visiting from another church, um, please continue to tithe at your home church. And for those of you that call this your home church, let's prepare our hearts. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he gave his life for us, Lord. We pray, Lord, that as we give of our tithes and offerings, Lord, that we give it to you and your kingdom, that it may further your kingdom. We pray, Lord, that many will come to know your love. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our lives and all that we are blessed by. May we bless you. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chad. Looking forward to this weekend and getting ready for our Easter services, our Easter play coming up. You know, there's a lot of work that is put into it. And normally what we say on our staff team is that we, we work hard so that the new people don't have to. In other words, when they come to church, they can receive all the goodness of God because that's what Jesus did. Jesus did the hard work for us so that we wouldn't have to. He said, I'm going to the cross. I will die for your sins. All you need to do is believe in me. And, well, I mean, that's, that's the benefit that we have. And that's the grace of God. He did the, the most difficult thing so that we could have the greatest thing. And that's eternal life. So I'm looking forward to this season. Again, Saturday, spruce up. And great things are happening. Don't miss this season, okay? I want to speak to you as the church, as the church of the living God, not just someone who attends church or you're like, well, I'm not close to God or, you know, I don't, I don't know God as much as the pastors do. No, if you believe in Jesus, you are part of his army. You are a soldier for Christ. You're not, you're not someone who's on the sidelines. So this season, keep praying that God would bring more people to himself, whatever church people go to. It doesn't have to be this church. So long as people find Jesus, people need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Just imagine the people that don't know him. Like we have issues. We all have. And we know Jesus. Imagine people who don't know Jesus and they have issues. Some of them are in your own home. Some of them are family members, coworkers. And instead of us looking down on them and saying, why the attitude? Why are they like this? We should be looking at ourselves and saying, Lord, let me be the light so that I can shine for them so that they would see my good works and glorify you in heaven. That's the whole point of and the whole process of us becoming more like Christ. We become more Christ-like because he's a light. So when people see that light, they're drawn to it. And when they're drawn to it, they're going to wonder, like, what, what is it about you that makes you different than anyone else in the world. Well, what makes the difference is that we shine for Christ. There's a different motive. We don't want something from you. We don't use you. We don't manipulate you. We're here to love you into the kingdom of God. So by the time they get to God, they fully understand their value. They fully understand that they're, they're worth everything that Jesus gave. That's why he died. And when we, when we hear that scripture over and over, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, we may, it's almost like we can lose the power because we hear it so often. But God so loved the world. That's why he gave us his one and only son. And without Jesus Christ, what would we be doing in life? We would just exist, and we'd be striving to be better than someone else. In other words, we'd be just like the world. But we're different than the world. That's why God wants us to develop spiritual disciplines that's, that's why we're in this series, Spiritual Disciplines, because he, he holds us responsible to discipline ourselves 
so that we can develop godliness. It takes a lot of discipline to develop godliness. I mean, it takes a lot of discipline just to do basic things. It takes a lot of discipline not to eat certain foods. It takes a lot of discipline to, to develop a habit. And I remember when I was brushing my teeth, you know, learning how to brush my teeth, I remember they, they tell, they, I think it was in school, they would have people tell us how to brush our teeth. And they said, do not brush it like this. They said, you have to brush down away from the gums. Did we listen? No. Probably work for like the first day. Then when you grow up and you got to rush, it's like. And then they have the, the electronic toothbrushes that spin. Yeah, so we think, you know, it's, 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 and it's supposedly better, but it takes so much longer. Because you're like, so you, it takes time, and you're, you're trying to develop a new habit. And then they have this new one, and I don't know if you've seen this, but it's like this little uh, packet of a, uh, there's toothpaste in it, and then you just put it in your mouth like a mouthpiece. And then you can, like, get ready. And it's like, and then there's this, like, ultraviolet, you know, Blu-ray disc in your teeth just supposedly killing the germs. Supposedly. So we don't know the ramifications of that one yet. So we'll, we'll see in the next 10 years how it'll go. So if people have been using that and I see them and their teeth is like dangling, I will, I will stay away from that one. But it took some time to develop the discipline for certain habits, uh, the way we do things, even the basic habits of everyday life. It takes a lot of discipline. So we develop disciplines for the things we actually love and enjoy. We develop disciplines for, let's just say you have a passion for a sport. You develop a discipline for that sport. While someone else who has no passion for it says, how, how, how often are you running up that hill? I run up that hill every day 10 times. 10 times. Well, I'm going to sit over here and eat donuts 10 times because I don't have a passion for that. I'm not going to do that. Two different people have a different passion and different disciplines. Now, when it comes to us as a believer, there are certain disciplines that God gives to us to develop. And he says, these spiritual disciplines are critical for your walk with me. Why? Because we don't automatically do these things. In the kingdom of God, it's no longer automatic, like how our flesh just kind of gravitates towards the flesh. Our spirit doesn't automatically gravitate toward the spirit. Why? Because we still have this flesh, our sinful nature. So we have to develop spiritual disciplines. And tonight, I want us to talk about this important book right here. The greatest book in the world. The Word of God. Because when we're young, like babies, someone else is feeding us. And then as we grow older, we can hold our own bottle. And then as we grow a little bit older... Now we get spoon-fed. And my kids, when they were young, when I would spoon-feed them, you know the baby, it's called baby food, right? Not baby sauce. Okay, baby food. I don't have babies anymore, so I don't know the name. But uh, as I'm feeding them, like I'm thinking, where is it going? They're not even, like I'm feeding them, it's like, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, they're not even chewing, they're not even, they're just like breathing this stuff in. So I'm trying to like just scoop it in their mouth. And then when it's done, they're like, ah, 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 like they want more. So we started to mix, you know, that, um, yeah, cereal. Thank you. That got to be a mom. <laughs> Certain things like cereals and other substance in it. And then, and then they were introduced to poi. That poi was the, that was the, the lifesaver. After all, I was like, just eat the root, you know, just <laughs> eat, the, just take the root in. And then rice came along, you know, they started to eat rice. And at an early age, like, the best food for our kids was like rice and gravy. That was like, they love that. If you had stew, they couldn't eat the meat, but they liked the rice and gravy. Some kids, and I'm not promoting this, okay, show you in rice. They love just show you in rice. I'm like, we might have to taper that off in the next 40 years. We gotta, we gotta watch our, our health here. But after a while, as they grow up, they start learning how to feed themselves. And, and we don't give them a fork right away, right? We get them the little spoons. And it's cute, the little baby spoons. They're like this big. 
and there's a plastic coating on it so they don't, you know, stab their gums or, you know, get hurt with it. And then after a while, they start learning how to feed themselves better and better and better. Notice I eat like, <laughs> I eat like this. You're supposed to hold your fork in a certain way. And we teach them that along the way. But uh, if we watch our children as they grow up, they're developing the discipline how to eat. It takes a lot of effort from an early age to learn how to eat. We forget about that because we're adults now and we eat nicely. We don't spill anymore. Well, some, <laughs> some <laughs> I saw some of the wives like, no, no, no. Uh, my husband, we're on bibs still yet. But I think when we're, when we're learning how to feed ourselves, we're going to have mistakes, we're going to have spills. We're also going to have to develop muscle memory for it. The same concept is how our spirit is. Because in the beginning, it's like God gives us everything. When we're listening to the word of God, we come to church or we read the Bible, it's like we're just being flooded with these things. And, and in the beginning, the Bible says you're, you're, you're drinking milk. So milk is easy to digest so we can, we can take in the word of God. But then after a while, we come to an age where we're, we're, we're transitioning from feed me to, wait a minute, I need to learn how to start using the tools that mom and dad are using so that I can eat. And then after a while, it's, you know what, I, I got this. I can, I can spoon feed myself. I can do that. And then as we continue to grow up, we start making our own food. Like there's a process that we go through with our physical body that we should be also be thinking about how that translates to our spiritual body. Just imagine what it would look like if we never learned to spoon feed ourselves. At 30 years old, ma, ma, I'm hungry. Oh, oh, honey, okay, here you go. Here, baby, here's some poi. Here's some, some food. You, would you like spam? Here's some spam. Get some, here you go. You get some for you. Like, what would that even look like? Imagine being at McDonald's or, or at, a, at a restaurant, a fancy restaurant like Roy's or a restaurant that, you know, fine dining, and you sit across the table and you're, my baby. I know you're 44, but you're my baby. <laughs> you're, you're still, like, you're still... If you're still in that stage, there, there's something that's just not clicking. Something that's not, like you never develop the habit of feeding yourself. When it comes to the word of God, it's no different. How long does it take us to spoon feed ourselves the word of God? As a believer, three months, five months, ten years? Like, how do we mature in beginning to feed ourselves and opening up the word of God for ourselves? At, at what stage? Because even, even with the physical food and eating physically, we don't know at what stage we develop the discipline to feed ourselves. It, it just came as a result of constantly, constantly working at spoon feeding ourselves. And if not for the word of God, his food, our spirits would starve to death. In the book of Matthew, and if you have your uh, app, you can, you can open that up because there are scriptures in there. But in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, that's when the devil tempted Jesus. And Jesus went through that test. He was in the wilderness. And the devil used the word of God against him. The devil used even the, the words that came from God's mouth, and he used it against Jesus Christ. Now, if Jesus didn't know the word, which... You know, we all know that he is the word, so the devil had no chance. If Jesus didn't come back with the word of God in its context, we wouldn't be here. But because Jesus is the word, he was able to, he was able to defeat the enemy in that arena with the word of God. And when the devil would tempt him, Jesus said, you know, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And just as consistent daily food is healthy for our bodies, consistent spiritual food is healthy for our spirit. It's the bread that comes from God. This is the food that we feed off of. We, we live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Everything is in existence because of the word of God. 
God spoke it and it came into existence. You see how powerful that is? And we tend to forget that what God said, he's still saying, and we think that there's no more power left in this. Oh, there is power. Why? Because it's the word of God. If God can speak anything from nothing and something from nothing, tell me he cannot do something great in our lives when nothing is happening. If there's nothing happening or something bad is happening or we're far from God, we're probably the best candidate for God to speak into because great things happen when God speaks. Everything that God speaks, he speaks with power and love. Now just think of us just opening up the word of God if this is our food, that if we just open up the word of God once a year. Now what would that look like? Well, I'll tell you what it would look like. Try eating once a year. Well, you wouldn't make it to the next year. I'm just letting you know. If, you, if we don't eat daily, yeah, our, our bodies go through different consequences as a result. Our, our, our physical bodies need food because it needs the nutrients for what it needs to do. We need energy. And if we don't bring in food we end up dying. Now you equate that to our spiritual life. If I don't take in the word of God, I'm dying spiritually. If you ever have a difficult time in your relationship, very rarely, very rarely, is it because of an issue that is exterior it is usually something that is happening on the inside of us. And normally, it's our spirit that has been weakened because we're not eating the bread of life. We're dying on the inside. And what we try to do is we try to do everything good on the outside. We try to, we try to do things better. We try to behave better. We try to be kind. We're trying to do all of these things, but we're not even eating the nutrients necessary for the energy that is needed for our spirit. And what happens is we're now burning off whatever energy we have of ourselves. That's why we always say if we want to do things for the kingdom of God, we cannot do it on our own. We need God's spirit for that to take place. Many of life's problems doesn't always come from external circumstances or through other people. It sometimes comes from an unhealthy soul. And then it just bleeds out to everything else. We're actually starving from the inside out. And the problem is that we don't, think that the, we don't think that the word of God still has value or is important. But the problem is making the choice to be in the word of God daily and establish a daily habit. Now, before you feel condemned or guilty, every single person struggles with being in the word of God. And if you're at a place and you're saying, I don't, I don't struggle with being in the word of God, that's a great thing. Maybe in the beginning it was difficult and maybe you've developed those dis disciplines and that's a good thing. But if you're at a place where it's difficult to be in the word of God, I pray that tonight would change all of that. There's a book by Pastor Wayne Cordero called The Divine Mentor. I always uh, promote this book because to me, this is probably the best book that I've read that has to do with developing a daily habit and the why behind it. And we have it at our resource center, but when I, when I read this book, it's almost like a way for me to understand why I'm reading this book. Because sometimes if you just open up this book and you read and you don't understand, you're going to put it away. But when you read it, with the understanding that there are some things you may not understand, God's Spirit gives you understanding. It's how you approach the Word of God. If you just look at it as I got to read, then it becomes a book. But if you look at it as, wow, this is God's, this is God's holy Word. Do you know that even people who don't believe in God, when they started reading it, began believing in God? because it's his spirit speaking to them. There's something that drew them closer to God through his word. So if you're having a hard time understanding the word of God, it's okay. 
It's okay in the beginning stages that you don't understand how to hold the bottle. It's okay. Why? Because you're at an infant stage. It's okay. Do you know that as a baby, every stage of a baby's life is perfect? Every stage. Perfect. Why? Because the baby is growing up. We don't look at a baby and get upset at the baby because the baby is not running or cooking their own meals. Why? Because we understand that at that time and place for this baby, they're growing up. And same thing as believers. We have grace by God. And he says, I know you're growing up, but here are some spiritual disciplines that I want you to have. And for us, even, even in, with our physical body, when we're hungry, we eat something. With our spirit, here's the difference. With our spirit, when we're spiritually hungry, sometimes we don't go to the word of God. We go to other things. And we mistake being hungry for the things of God and the word of God for the things of the world. And we, like, like there's something empty on the inside and we're thinking, what is it? What do I need to fill myself up with? And so we turn to other things. We we'll turn to movies, entertainment, Netflix, and shows, and social media. We'll even go shopping. We'll do all these things thinking that that's going to satisfy our soul. No, nothing wrong with these things. But if that's what we're turning to, to fill the void and the hunger that only the Word of God can, you're still starving. And our soul is still dying. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 6, with the Beatitudes, he said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. He's saying when you hunger and thirst for me, that's where satisfaction comes from. That's when you're going to be filled. And the word righteousness that he uses means integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, or correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. If you think of those words, that's who Jesus is. And he's the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so when we get into the word of God, really we're developing our relationship with Jesus. Now if you think about the hunger that we have for not just physical food, but a hunger for spiritual things or, or something to satisfy our soul. Someone had to put that there. Because every human being has that. Every human being hungers and thirsts for something more than physical food. And the Bible says that God put that there. He put eternity in the hearts of man. God is eternal. So God put a, a, almost like a, a like property in us. And he wants to live there. He's just waiting for us to invite him to build there. Not visit. God doesn't want to visit. He's our father. He wants to stay with us. He's not some stranger. He's, he's our father who wants to stay with us. So he says, I'm going to put eternity in the hearts of man. And it's there so that we call out to him. Psalm 119 verse 60 says that all your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. All of his, every single word that he speaks are all true. But if we're hungering and thirsting for righteousness, but then we run towards everything else, we, we continue to starve our spirits to death. Now, nothing wrong with the, the things that we use or, you know, places that we go or shopping or social media and things like that. But if that's above everything else and our spirits are dying, oh boy, now we have to switch some things around and prioritize. In fact, the Bible even says in Matthew 6, 32 and 33 that these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. He's saying everything else, I'll, I'll give you what you need, but right now you're starving and what you need is my spirit. You need my word. And the difficulty of reading and journaling is, is a real life spiritual struggle. Some people don't like reading. Some people don't like writing. Some people don't like praying. They fall asleep when they pray. And not necessarily you don't like praying. It's just when you do, you forget because you're praying and it's like, Lord Jesus. It's just so comfortable closing your eyes. Also, at the same time, it's not just praying, but it's, it's really developing our relationship with God. 
And feeding ourselves is a part of this relationship with him. Now, I know in the very beginning, especially in the beginning of the year, we'll have the bookmarker, we'll pass that out, or we'll, we'll pick it up, and then we'll say, okay, this year, we're going to read every single day. And then we read the first day, we feel so good, then the next day, it's like, oh, i got to get up, I'm late, we, we're busy, we head out of the house, tomorrow I'll catch up, I'm going to read five chapters. And then we miss that, and then we miss another day, and it's like, okay, next, okay, Saturday, I don't work Saturday. I'm going to read 70 chapters Saturday. I'm going to catch up. I'm going to read the whole book of Psalms on Saturday from beginning to end, from the morning to the night. I'm just going to read the whole Bible so I just catch up one time. And so we play catch up, and we never, we, we never develop the discipline because we think it's about checking off the boxes and just getting in the Word of God. You know if you just read the Word of God just to read, you're not really developing a discipline because it's, it's, it's how you're thinking. It's, it's your body. It's, it's what you're doing and understanding. I can, if you played sports or you're in sports right now, I can tell you this. If you went through the actions that your coach was asking of you, but your mind and your heart wasn't in it, he'd know. He'd know. You can go to the punching bag and punch the bag and, and just punch the bag and st, st, even have the sounds. Like my friend Donald. St, st. You can do all of that. But if the coach is watching you, he's like, where's your heart? Where's your attitude? Where's your mind? Coach is going to be like, you're doing the motions, but there's, you're not learning anything. There's no muscle memory being built. In other words, when we get into the word of God, it's much more than just reading his word. We, we need to be involved in it. Now, I don't want to sound discouraging because I want to bring encouragement. What I am saying is this struggle is definitely real. We all struggle with it. Whether you read the Bible in the morning or afternoon, evening or night or not at all, the main thing is you begin developing a habit of reading the Bible. And so what we're going to do is look at three reasons why we struggle with being in the Word of God and then what we can establish in our lives so that we can benefit from feeding ourselves the word of God. And, and what I'll do is I'll give a, a, a reason and then what to do behind it. And along with it, it's, it's going to help us at least to go back to, okay, that's why and this is what I can do. And points one and two will kind of go hand in hand and you'll see why. Because we all struggle with the reality of life. And so here, here's the first thing. Finding time is difficult. Finding time to be in the word of God, to feed ourselves difficult because there are other opportunities and so many options out there and we we've become so busy that finding time is very difficult now notice it's not having time is difficult finding time is difficult why isn't it having time difficult because we all have 24 hours in a day. We all have the same amount, and you will have the same amount of time every single day. It's not like tomorrow you're gonna wake up and it's like, oh man, only get 22 hours in this day. No, every single day has 24 hours. Now, if you get up late, yeah, you're gonna miss some time, but it is very difficult to find time to be in the Word of, in, to be in the word of God. It's very difficult, but it is possible. It's possible. Now, I just want you to think just for a minute. Dream with me. Dream with me. How much of our time is wasted on things that never feed our spirit? Now, I'm not to condemn. Don't look at the person next to you. Don't say, so you're on your phone all the time. Don't look at the person next to you. See, you're always watching Netflix. Don't look at the person and saying, you're on social media like 17 hours a day. You don't even sleep. You're sleeping with your phone. And that's not what it's about. It's really about thinking through how much of our time is given to everything else other than the word of God. Seriously, I, we can, in, in, a, in a, a quick sit-down setting, you can go through social media in a quick two hours. Easy. If you're not careful. And then, how dare them come up with this thing called screen time. Do you have that on your phone? You can check your screen time. Yeah, if you have that, check your screen time. Just see, like, okay, what is, what is the screen time? What does that look like? And you're going to see some things. I looked at my screen time, and it said, it said, you are on this app for 12 hours. 
thank God it was my alarm clock. I was like, oh, good thing was that one. But we, we, if, you, if you're able to check that, and if you're able to check where you are, it'll help you to develop the discipline to find that time. Because it doesn't have to be five hours, three hours, two hours. You just start with what you have. And you can write that if you're, if you're on the app, uh, there's a bullet point. Just start where you're at. Just start where you're at. One scripture at a time. If it's just one scripture that you're reading and, or memorizing or, or putting into practice, start there. Get it in you. Because it's all about the discipline. You're disciplining yourself so that you can be in the word of God. Just one scripture at a time. Because there's great value at developing a daily habit of disciplining yourself to read the Bible, to get into the Word of God and get the Word of God into you. God's Word is incredibly essential to every part of our lives. Without His Word, we starve to death. Every issue we face and any challenge that lie ahead, we'll be able to handle it better because we cannot prepare for something we have no experience for. We cannot prepare for something that we have no idea is going to take place. But God's word will prepare us. In fact, Psalm 119, verse 6 says, Then I shall not be ashamed when I look upon all your commandments. You know what the word of God is saying? That God's word helps us to not live in shame because we keep stumbling over and over again. It's because of his word, his commandments, that he gives us the next step, that he, he knows what lies ahead, and so he's going to give us the wisdom to make certain decisions as well as how to avoid certain pitfalls. Psalm 119, verse 105, many of us have memorized this scripture, that the word, that your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. See, being faithful and disciplined in the word of God and, and feeding ourselves gives us enough light for the next step ahead and in the best direction. That's what the Word of God does. And when we respect the Word of God, we give attention to it, it gives us direction. God gives us direction. He, his, his reward is to point us in the right direction. He's saying, when you obey my commands, I'm going to point you in the right direction. But the problem many of us have is we don't like the direction he might be pointing us in. God will give us wisdom and we say, well, I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's my wisdom for you. Yeah, but we're not doing well right now in our relationship. Oh, no, I got the answer. You just need to ask for forgiveness. Yeah, speak to them. Yeah, it's, it's not going well right now at work. That's okay. Shine your light. Yeah, how about, how about they shine their light because some of them are believers. No, no, I'm asking you. You're the one that will, will you change the entire atmosphere? Nah, tomorrow. Like, God will speak to us. He'll give us direction. The, the problem is sometimes we just don't want to go in that direction. It's just that hard. That's why his word is so important. It keeps us moving in the direction. It may take us 20 years. It may take us 40 years. But we'll get there. My thought is this. God, I don't want to wait 40 years for your promises in my life. 40 minutes is long enough. So, Lord, help me to feed myself so that I can be directed by your word and receive all of your promises. Because when I receive your promises, not only I benefit, everyone around me benefits. If you want your family to be successful, this is where it starts. It starts here. It's feeding ourselves the word of God. Proverbs 3, verse 6 says, Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. He, he gives us he gives us the details of today as well as the discernment for tomorrow. That's, that's what he does through his word. He gives us the wisdom and the, the, the necessary details for what I need today as well as the discernment for what I'm going to need tomorrow. It's hard to find that time, but it's there. We just have to start with what we have. The second thing is, and the truth is that some of us have a hard time reading. And if you're taking notes, it's just that simple. I have a hard time reading. I have a hard time reading. I open up the Word of God, I fall asleep. I open up the Word of God, I don't have glasses. I open up the Word of God, I don't know where the pages are. Like we, we all have some type of reason when it comes to reading. If you're not a reader, thank God for different types of apps on our phones or on the computer. There are certain apps that will read to you. Believe it or not, 
Some of you are audible learners, which means you learn best by listening. You learn be- I learn best by listening and reading. But I do have a hard time listening to Heidi. That's different. That's husband and wife. But when it comes to the word, I don't know where she is. But when it comes to the word of God, when I can listen and read, because I think the art side of me, I, I love art, so I try to picture what's happening. And when the Bible is reading along with what I'm reading, there's like, you know, music in the background. You can hear different sounds. They have like, you know, if they're talking about horses, you hear the horses. So like, they put you in that atmosphere. And so it helps me to remember what I'm reading. But figure out, like, what works for you if you have a hard time reading. In that bullet there, just put, find creative ways to get the word of God into you. Whatever creative way that you can get the word of God into you. You might be thinking, you know, we just had a baby, so I can't, I can't even get to the word of God. Like, as, I, as I'm walking to the word of God, it's five feet in front of me. It took me 17 hours to get there. This happened, this happened, this happened. And I understand, that's, that's real life. It actually happens. But you can be creative in it. Use the audio version. We use, the, we use a, a Bible app called YouVersion, Y-O-U-V-E-R-S-I-O-N. It comes out of Life Church and uh, Pastor Greg Groeschel, as well as our, our uh, church app. And you can hit the reading plan that we all go through the same reading every day for an entire year, and we'll all go through the entire Bible together in one year. Imagine if all of us as believers at this church read the same passages every single day, how God would strengthen us as a church. That I'm getting something, I'm receiving something, you might be receiving something, and we might, we might see each other in town, and hey, what did you read today? I read this. What? Yeah, I got a different perspective. And now we have two lessons because we were able to share. And it strengthens us as the body of Christ. We're all reading together. Someone asked me, they said, but what about reading the daily bread? I said, daily bread is fine. Whatever you can do to get, in, to get the word of God into you, that's fine. But someone did tell me, they said, you know, I've been a believer for 20 years. And I've only been reading the daily bread. But now that I started reading the Bible for myself rather than someone else's devotion, I gained so many different insights and i said yeah that's the difference maybe you're going from being spoon fed to now learning how to use the spoon and now you're cooking for yourself it's just the process that we all go through so it's okay at every stage where we're at so long as we're getting the word of god into us and we want to feed our spirits because if not then we're going to struggle every single day but find those creative ways if you're getting ready in the morning Put on the, the, the reading plan, put on the audio, and some of us have headphones. Now they have wireless headphones. I really, truly believe this. I really believe this. Now, you, you can disagree with me. That's okay. But I truly believe God gives mankind the greatest ideas to be used for him. It's to be used for him. So if you have like AirPods or wireless headphones, you can put on the word of God, get ready in the morning, and you're gaining insight. And if a scripture pops out to you, you meditate on that scripture all day long. If that's where you're at with your walk with God and reading his word, do that. Just get the word of God in you. Start with what you have. Be faithful in that little. Be, find creative ways to do this. You might be busy at school. You have a lot of studying to do, projects to do. If you're driving to work, same thing. Put that on and just listen to the word of God. Get it in you. Yeah, but I like the radio. That's fine. You make the choice. Because I can tell you this, the word of God has far more valuable than anything else that we're going to be listening to. It just builds us up from the inside out. Psalm 19 verse 7 says that the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. It's not saying that we're dumb people. It's saying even in our, even if we're, you know, we're lacking sense, we don't have the wisdom, the word of God is going to make sure that we're wise. I can't tell you how often, you know, when I came to know the Lord, I was 19 years old, and I, I believe uh, going through the pastoral licensing process, I think I was around age 27. 
So that's, that's fairly being considered a young pastor. But I remember in the younger years, in my 20s, when, I would, when someone would call the church and they would say, is the pastor available? You know, my wife and I are going through some struggles. Can we get some counseling? And they said, yeah, we have, we have a pastor available right now if you come up. And they would show up and I show up. And they're in their 50s. They've been married for 20 years. And they see me. They're like, oh, we came to see the pastor. Oh, yeah, I'm, the, I'm, I'm that person. I can't tell you how often they would hesitate. And they'd be like, oh, is your dad here? <laughs> a couple of times they, do, they would ask. And I said, no, no, no. But let's just sit down. Let's just talk it out. Let's hear. And, and there wasn't a single time when that happened that they didn't leave richer because of the word of God. It's never our wisdom. I'm 27 years old at that time. Not right now. You're like, mm, no, you're not. I see the gray hair from here. But at that specific moment, I remember constantly people walking out of the office feeling refreshed because of his word, not because of my wisdom. At 27 years old, I have none. At 40, how old am I? Something. I still don't got it. It all comes from his word. This is, this is the, the greatest book of wisdom. And he says, this is for you. You can have it and utilize it for your life. See, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and we go through whatever we go through, he'll give us the wisdom necessary for what we don't have the experience for or even life solutions. But what does it mean that when I read the Bible that he's going to give me the answers? Will he give me all the answers? I can tell you this, no. For some reason, he doesn't answer everything like that. And it could very well be because he wants us to want him more than just answers. Otherwise, he's going to be like, you know how they have that fictitious movies, you know, like a genie. Um, I know Aladdin is coming out looking forward to that. But it's there like a genie. And it's like, what can I get from God? But God wants us. And we need him. Our soul needs God. And sometimes it comes... His word comes through maybe solving a problem. Maybe the Holy Spirit will build something within us and, and build a deep reservoir of wisdom for what lay ahead. It, it, it can be giving us wisdom to avoid some major consequences. And maybe at other times, he gives us strength and wisdom to endure the difficult season that's going to come up ahead. We don't know what's going to happen, but all we know is that his word is going to give us wisdom. We may not have all the answers at one time at, at our disposal for every situation we face, but he knows what he's doing. I, 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 I liken it in this way. Uh, sometimes I'll read, in fact, most of the times I'll read, I'll read a paragraph and I'll forget what I just read. And I'll go back and I'll read again and I'll, be, I'll even listen to it and I'll go back and I'll listen. Okay, got it, got it, got it. And then the next day, after I, I do my devotions, if I type it in or if I write it in a journal, I try to remember, what was my title of my journal? And I, I forget. And so what I try to do is apply it as quickly as possible, lest I forget. But even then, we'll forget. And sometimes that can be discouraging, that you're reading the Word of God, but you forget. And it can be discouraging that, boy, that's why I don't read, because I just, I forget anyway. Like, it's not even doing anything. I read, I read, I read. I forget everything. Now, how many of you remember what you ate for lunch today? Okay. We can remember. Some of us can remember what we ate for lunch because it was about maybe six hours ago, seven hours ago. Can you remember what you ate for lunch yesterday? Possibly. What about 10 years ago? <laughs> hey, you thought you was smart, eh? He was like, yeah, I remember yesterday. <laughs> Here's what happens, though. Even though you don't remember what you ate 10 years ago, tell me it did not support you and give you the sustenance for that time. Tell me it didn't give you what you needed at that time. You may not remember it, but you're alive because you ate 10 years ago. Right? You, you, you're going to read the Word of God and you may not remember everything, but when it comes down to it, you have the Word of God in you. And, the, and even the Bible tells us that when you, you have the Word of God in you, you hide it in you that you may not sin against him. So when we have the word of God in us, it's doing something even though we may not see it. 
It's nourishing us, giving us the support that we need. The daily bread of God's word is like that. It gives us the sustenance and the nourishment for our spirit so that when we need to make a split-second decision, we can make that decision. We have a spiritual discernment to follow his lead that was given to us last Tuesday through his word, 10 years ago through his word. It just, it, it comes out of us. Why? Because we've been developing that discipline. Just like an athlete develops, develops a discipline 10, 20 years, and then all of a sudden makes one fantastic catch. And everybody's like, wow, where'd you learn that? Did you, were you practicing that? It's like, no, well, kind of. How long did it take you? 20 years. It's, it's at that very moment that the word of God is going to, it's living and active, says Hebrews 4.12. It's, it's alive. So don't ever underestimate reading the word of God and not remembering it. Just keep disciplining yourself for that, which is the third thing. Work on discipline rather than quantity. You work on your discipline rather than quantity. I, I, I liken athletics to this a lot because of muscle memory. And when you're learning something new, you don't go full speed. You're just disciplining yourself so that you can work on the technique and the skill versus the power behind it or looking good or being fast. You're working on all technique. So this is what we do when we work on discipline rather than the quantity of how long we're in the word of God or how much we write. Just work on the discipline and be faithful in the little. If you want to write that in, be faithful in the little. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, it says, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. That word discipline comes from a Greek word, gymnazo, which is where we get the word gymnasium. In other words, go work out, go, go, go do some spiritual exercises so that you can have godliness. In the beginning, when I was getting into the word of God and developing the discipline to, to do daily devotions, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't understand everything that I was reading. I would have a composition book, and I, I didn't use the acrostic that we use now, S-O-A-P, because in those times, Pastor Wayne was just developing that. So I would just write out in my journal, just constantly, and I still have those journals from in the 1990s, and I would just write and write and write. I look back at those journals, it doesn't even make sense, some of the things. But it didn't have to at that time. That's where I was at my growth stage. You know, mango season is coming up. You know how I know? I see the little flowers coming up. I get excited because mango season is coming up. I don't get mad at the mango tree like, where the mangoes? I see the little flowers coming up. I'm like, go produce fruit, buddy. I'm happy. I don't get mad at it. And God doesn't get mad at us if he just sees a little blossom come out. He's not looking at us and saying, where's the fruit? He's like, you got this. You got this. Stay in my word. Stay in my word. Find that time. Be faithful in the little. Whatever time you have. And I remember putting post-its here and there of different scriptures. Just different and post-its everywhere. Because that's where I was at. That's how I memorized scripture. I just put post-its all over. And I would be working, come back in my office. What is that? Okay. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay. Got it. Takes five to seven seconds. If you want to memorize a scripture and you don't have time, John 13, 35. You go look it up. You'll thank me later. Some of you already know that scripture. Go look it up, John 13, 35. Memorize that scripture. Start there. Start with the little. Always remember that your Bible may be closed, but your relationship with God is never closed. So when we get into the word of God and we close the Bible, God is with you. You know, when Joshua took over from Moses and leading them into the promised land, that was a big task but in Joshua 1.8, it says that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Yeah, it comes from the word of God. Did you know that multi-million and billion dollar corporations use the principles from the word of God? The word of God is so powerful that even its principles bring success. Imagine if, if we follow it, what could happen in our lives and our families. 
That's why he said, don't let it depart from your mouth. Meditate it on it day and night. Without his word, all the evils of the world, the temptations of this world will eventually starve us to death spiritually. Psalm 119 verse 9 and 11 says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Your word have I treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. You know, D.L. Moody, he said that this book will keep you from sin. Or sin will keep you from this book. So we bring in the word of God that we may not sin against him. This is where our faith is built. Romans 10, 10, 17 says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. It's through his word. See, we, we're, Jesus calls us his sheep. And his sheep hear his voice. But do you know that he also calls us an army? Which means that we are all soldiers. In other words, he, he brings us into his sheepfold we start off as sheep, but he builds us up to become soldiers. We go from sheep, sheep to, it's hard to say, sheep to soldiers. That's why in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6, the armor of God, if you armor up every single day, read Ephesians chapter 6, armor up with the word of God. There are six pieces of armor, belt of truth breastplate of righteousness. You shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and then there's the last one, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Without the word of God, we have no weapon. Oh, we need the shield of faith to, to as the Bible says, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish the, all the firing, flaming darts of the evil one. Yeah, we can do that with the shield of faith, but what weapon will we have? Have you ever tried using a shield as a weapon? It's like just whacking somebody over the head with a frying pan. No, he said, you have the word of God, that's your sword, use the sword, Ephesians 6, verse 17. So let's be those kinds of people that we develop the discipline to feed ourselves because God's word was given to us and he is worthy for us to give him our very best. If you have a difficult time even developing a system, we have journals that can help you with that in our resource center. And it's just a way for us to develop the habit of being in the word of God, especially during this season where many people are going to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. God calls us to be the church to go out into the world and reach people for him. If we go out into the world and we're not armored up, we don't have the word of God in us, we get swallowed up with everyone else. But we're his soldiers we armor up, we go out into the world, and we do battle for the people who have yet to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Let's be his army tonight. Would you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for your word. You've given us not just your spirit, but You've given us something tangible that we could have in our hands. And if we, if we could go into how the word of God has survived all these years, we would know that your hand was on it. Your word is the only book in the world that you breathe life into. That's how important it is. So Lord, help us to value your word. Help us to develop the discipline to feed ourselves and that we would take in the word of God with wherever we're at. Start with where we're at. Be faithful with where we're at. Even if it's just one scripture a day or listening to the audible Bible, whatever it takes, Lord, we want to be people of the word. And as that takes place, you're going to build us up. You're going to build inside of us a reservoir where streams of living water flow out of that's our heart, Lord. We want to be pleasing to you. So I pray for all of us that we would be the people of God that live for you, but not just be the people of God, that we would be people who are in the word of God. We all pray this in your precious name, Lord, and we all said together,
Amen. Amen. Ooh. Take that home with you. Take that.